Okie dokie, we're back here with another social security video. We've received a lot of inquiries about social security in particular. When is the best time to take it? And we have an answer for you. We don't have a freaking clue because it really all depends on so many variables. If you're married, been divorced, how long you've been working, what your age is. Uh, there's so many different things that can come into play that can affect it. And there's a couple little you know, uh, loopholes, if you will, that are still available with Social Security. Uh, they might be uh, knotted up at some point, but right now there's still some uh, loopholes uh, to maximize a lot of your Social Security. Once again, we are not experts. This is not any kind of advice. Uh, what we did is the next best thing is we went to um, U.S. News and their money uh, section. There's a great article by Harriet Edelson talking about it. Well, I recommend you reading that. There's some great info in there. Let me just give you some, some of the quick little bullet points from that. Uh, she says, if you're married, if you're married, as you calculate when to claim your Social Security benefits, think about the future. When one spouse will most likely die before the other, etc. If both spouses have worked enough to qualify for their own benefits, it's important to coordinate when each will claim their benefits. For married couples, it's particularly important for the higher earner to delay, so the higher earner to delay because that amount becomes the survivor benefit for whoever lives longer. If you're single, uh, the point here, it's critical to max out your benefit by waiting until age 70, of course, if you can, uh, because that could be the major source of income you'll have unless you do have some kind of pension or a big daddy 401k out there. Now, if you do have an IRA or 401k, uh, they talk uh, about some different uh, tactics to, uh, to kind of merge and use those two in conjunction with each other as far as timing. And uh, of course, you got a huge taxable differences in the 401k and Social Security. Um, with Social Security, uh, the key point is that Social Security income is not taxed the same way as uh, your qualified income where they talk about your IRA and 401k income. And there are some special little ways to reduce your Social Security taxes. Uh, if your Social Security pushes your total combined income as measured by a secret, not actually really, it's not secret at all formula, above 34,000 for single people and 44,000 for couples, then up to 85% of every Social Security dollar you earn can be taxed. Uh, these thresholds were set way back in, uh, in the 80s and were not indexed for inflation. Kind of a joke when you look at it right now. If you're still working uh, today, uh, if you can claim worker, spousal, or survivor benefits before your retirement age at 66 or between 66 and 67 for most baby boomers, you are likely to be subject to the earnings test. Uh, it says with the earnings test, if you start your Social Security benefits prior to age 66, during every year leading up to your full retirement age, $1 of your benefits will be withheld for every $2 you earn above the limit for that year, which is $15,480 for 2014. During the year which you reach your full retirement age, 66 for those born between 1943 and 54, your benefits are reduced $1 for every $3 earned above the higher limit, which is $41,000. $400 until the month you re reach your full retirement age, then the earning test disappears. So we hope that helps. Once again, this is from US News and their money section, personal finance, Harriet Edelson, a great article, because as I mentioned, we are not experts. We are more experts on annuities and other retirement income and do not give any kind of social security advice whatsoever. But we do try to educate as much as we can and try to point you in the right direction. Until next time,